There's a pretty one, Ulysses. So I'm doing a schedule, but because because Davy Evans number two, I've, I've I've sneakily read this. I've filmed my review already for it, and interestingly, I did a, a YouTube search. And who was the only booktuber who came up with it? Do you want to have a guess? I think I know. I think it's me. <laughs> it's 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 in this condition. Like Titi Dagger, I'm go. Yeah. I'm so disappointed you're the only person speaking about it because it's so okay. Well, it's, it's okay. 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 It's okay, but it was okay. Don't go any further in the series. Um, I got the Book of Not there, and I come across Britta's done This Mortal Body yes. earlier this week. I was in I, on that buddy read with her and Eric Carl Anderson. And I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued that two people said, stop. <laughs> So it's, um, uh, it's the worst book I've ever read. The Book of Nod is one of the worst books I've ever read, and then I so was This Mournable Body, and I bailed halfway through because I, I just I just couldn't. So yes, I just I don't really know what it's. I don't know. Obviously, I watched a review, so I have like a vague understanding of what's going to happen in This Mortal Body before you gave up on it. I just don't know where Tambu's story is going to go after reading this. I wasn't... It feels not rounded, but I quite liked how it ends with her in the boarding school, the nun school. But I did feel Yesha's illness kind of was just shoehorned a little bit. Yeah, I don't remember all the details of that, but it was a, it was competent. It was okay. It was competent, yeah. Yeah. That, just... I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> I'm interested in Dangaren because obviously what's happened recently because she got arrested for protesting in Harare. But I don't know, is this model of body based in modern day Harare? It does come up to more modern day, yeah. And that same character is in Tambu. happy time in her so, life, in the life of her country. But I mean, I, I am so into African fiction. I'm not an expert, but I read... Mm. Compared to lots of other people, I read a lot of African fiction, including from Zimbabwe. And the novel to read is We Need New Names by... Oh, yeah, I heard you speak about this Violet one. Bulawayo. That's a, yes, that I remember the first day. That for yeah. a women's prize. And it's not perfect either, but it was a joy to read and just such a uh, profoundly literary experience. And the last two volumes of Dangaremba's trilogy? No. Ugh. Oh, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to the book of not good now. I'm going to be very disappointed, I feel, but I'm going in open, open mind. <laughs> I don't think I read much African literature. I, after reading this, I've been kind of scratching my head, and I feel so as a, as a continent. I'm going to put money and say it's my least read continent, because I, I need to get on a Chimamanda Adichie and a Gozi, but mm, I, good. I need to. So there's that, and the book of not this mortable body. And then, should we talk about Shuggy Bane? Yeah, let's talk about Shuggy Bane. Oh, let's talk about Shuggy Bane. Shuggy Bane. Right, okay, so this. I will tell um, you where I'm at in the book so that you don't spoil anything. I am just, I'm at the chapter, I forget the chapter number, but it's where the older brother is, he's just got a job to get away from his family. I've only read about three pages of that. Chapter. The uh, sister, Catherine, has just, has gotten married and gone to South Africa. So that's where I'm at. So don't tell me anything cool. that happens after that. Okay. Yes, marvelous. For this, maybe should we talk up to Pithead when they move into the the house? Is yeah, that probably sure. easier? Great. Let's do that. So, yeah, when they move into the house. This book, I don't know. Did, did you watch my like initial reactions? I, did. I have like high hopes for this one. I didn't. So this is about like factorism, small mining community, and how everything kind of like is stripped away and destroyed, pretty much. Yes. It, it like speaks very much of where I've grown up, which is the Ronda. Uh-huh. And I have Glaswegian family as well. So my Scottish family all based in uh, Glasgow. Wow. So there's like a correlation between what happened, such as like the Tonopandi riots. I don't know if you've heard of those. Mm, not, not um, so. 
so but where they closed all the the colliery uh, down the miners uh, in Todapandi, which is like two towns over from where I grew up, they rioted, looted, and it was like a, a very big event uh, in in Bali history. So I was keen to read this, especially as I know I said I wouldn't speak about my dad, but he's like a, a huge was a huge alcoholic growing up, and everything that's happened to Sugar Babe so far is a a replication of my life pretty much growing up so i have like very high hopes for it but it's it's okay at the moment i'm not completely in love i would say so far with this okay i kind of want to see where big shug kind of where that storyline's going with agnes but i feel i don't know if you feel the same i kind i i have I have a guess of what's going to happen to Agnes at the end. And I don't know if that's just going to be dragged out. I might be completely wrong, but I I do feel as though she's just going to go to a very dark place Mm -hmm. to which something inevitable will happen to her, which explains why Shuggy's at the beginning on his own. At the beginning of the novel, he's 16 and he's on his own, yeah. Yeah, trying to find, um, trying to get into hairdressing, living in the um, the board house. But I, my panic is that I know what's going to happen to Agnes. Okay, that's interesting. So that's very much what Britta yeah. said. Britta won't probably, Britta won't mind me saying because this was a private communication, but she thought when it started out where we met Shugi and so we kind of knew where the story was going to end that she felt it yeah. was anticlimactic to spend so much time bringing this story up to that point and that's not the kind of reader I am so that's immaterial to me I am just mm. so immersed in the characters and just find the situations they are in and what how their characters are being revealed to me just an absolute it's painful to read but also an absolute delight yeah it's such a character driven novel yeah i i think big shug's done exceptionally well yeah he's so easy to hate it's brilliant I have to say, Big Shug is just this brilliant, yeah, hateful and, character. But, but, and nuanced enough that you can't hate absolutely everything as much as there's so many hateful things about him, which I love. Yeah, and Agnes, I think, done very well. Yeah. But where both of us are, I don't think we've seen Agnes fully developed yet. Would yeah. you agree? Well, I, I, I think. I, when you're that bad of an alcoholic, I don't know... What, Unless we see her, if we end up seeing her post recovery, if that's part of the story, you know, that would be yeah. interesting, or maybe that isn't part of her story. I don't know. So if, if she just descends further into alcoholism, I don't expect there's going to be much character development because that's not part of the process. Exactly. <laughs> I think we've kind of viewed Agnes through Shug's lens so far. But also, I kind of know like alcoholism is very inward rather than outward right but i'm interested to see her develop as in like how her addiction like affects her day to day i feel as though we're kind of viewing it through a lens rather than her specifically that's very interesting i have to think about that because certainly we we are inside her a lot when shug is not around yeah I'm, I, it's very close to home, this book. So I'm trying to like, I'm, I'm aware that I'm kind of bringing like a lot of bias to this. Well, that's, um, that's what reading's all about. But yeah, I don't know. I think, I think if it ends the way that it does, I think Stuart has to do it like so well. But so it's giving me good vibes. It's okay at the moment. But I have 300 more pages to go. Yeah. So we will and, uh, <laughs> we'll have to reconvene. I, I, I am having a much more uh, superlative experience with it because it's such a richly character-driven novel, which is my sweet spot. So I hope it wins so that you do all the book next year. Or just a short well, list. I'm fine with just a short list. That's right. <laughs> We've got so many more books. Why is there so many? So after, after Shuggy Bay, I'll be reading The Shadow King. 
I have had that on my uh, shelf since be- long before the Booker list came out, and I'm really curious about it because I'm interested in African fiction. Yeah, I'm interested in kind of like the African view of Mussolini. Yeah, uh, because I've only studied Mussolini's invasion from a European perspective, and the fact that this is about like women who want to fight the good fight. I'm just like excited to read this one. It just ticks a lot of boxes. I think it would be bleak. I can't imagine like, what the war novel is fun, but <laughs> but this, I just think it's going to be just a good read. I think it's just going to be like enlightening. I think it's going to be just interesting because I don't think I could even compare it to anything. Right. I've never read anything set in Ethiopia. I've read a little bit of history, British social history about uh, suffragettes and one of the bankers. Stars, <laughs> she ended up being completely wedded to the Ethiopian liberation cause for the rest of her life and, and mm-hmm. died in Ethiopia. So I got quite a bit of that Ethiopian during the Italian invasion or colonization or whatever, and then post through that book that set, sets me up really well to, to dive into this novel. I'm just excited about this one. I hope this does well. Yeah. My reading of it might be very different, but who knows? And another one that's fairly similar to where I'm kind of like just really excited to get to it is Si Pam Zhang's How Much of These Hills is Gold, which I <laughs> described in my predictions video as the new As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Uh-huh. It, it has this like element about burying your father in America, trying to find, which I hope it is because I hated As I Lay Dying. There was too many comparisons to his mum being a fish for me. Um, and I don't ask for much in books, but my mum is a fish was definitely not one of those ones. Ironically, I will take it to my grave because it's been embedded in me. But I, yeah, everyone's loved this. Great. I have me. heard mixed reviews, but... Oh, I've not heard a single bad review. Okay. Oh, who, who has said negative things about it? I believe it was because... Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures ba- bailed on it, maybe. Oh, I'll, I'll scout that That's out. The only, I always the only one that I maybe have heard. So. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested as well because Pam Zhang said, if you're, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I think if you contact her and you're BIPOC or transgendered, uh, she will try and get a copy to you because it's written for those people. Oh, interesting. Um, so I think if you, if you contact her through Twitter, she will get the book to you. I believe it's if you're BIPOC or transgender, hmm. she'll send it out to you. But I thought that was interesting because no other author I have ever been made aware of has offered that yeah. as an opinion. Well, as an opinion, as a, as a gesture. Yeah, very interesting. And then this one, mm, it's Diane Cook's The New Wilderness, which just... Sounds really boring. Have, have we had a dystopian ever written, like... It, it just seems like standard is standard dystopian. However, the first line was interesting, mm. which is the baby emerged from being the color of a bruise. Oh, I quite like that. I think that's all I want to say on it. Okay. I just feel it's just going to be another dyst- I just think it's going to be another dystopian novel. We've had those, and I'm more than happy to put the dystopian genre aside for yeah. a good few years. Me too. <laughs> and then the last one I physically got. Is Love and Other Thought Experiments by Sophie Ward? Yeah, I am really interested in that one. Eric is a big fan of that one. I a few very good things, but I feel as though it's either going to be the psychology of the mind, it's yeah. either going to be done very digestibly, or it's I'm going to miss the point. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to be a Sean book either, because it's what? It's kind of like, yeah, this all thought experiments. Uh, I need to. I need some well-drawn characters, but I watched the first two minutes of Eric's Zoom chat with her, and mm-hmm. I fell in love with her. And I didn't want to watch anymore until I read the book, but she seems lovely, so I want to give it a shot. I always feel like with these books, I kind of want to know like where the source is coming from. So it, it was similar to, oh, what was his name? Who did the Orchestra of Minorities? Chigozi uh, Obiyama. Chigozi Ngozi, yeah, yes. That's the one. Because I haven't read the like the Odyssey or the Iliad, most of it just went over my head. I didn't really know. 
I know that's not his fault, that's my fault. Mm. But I feel sometimes knowing where you're drawing from helps. But Sophie Ward, isn't she a psychologist? Or she did, no, no, uh, philosophy? I, I think. And but I don't usually I'm, do well with philosophical fiction, so yeah. It's going to go one way or the other for me. But then the other books I haven't got is, we'll save the most controversial to last, but there's Anne Tyler's uh, Redhead by the Side of the Road. Uh, I hear it's good and uh, maybe not a booker book, but it's good. Well, I didn't know Anne Tyler won a Pulitzer. So I was a bit like, oh, right, maybe, because I've never read them. I always wanted to read, is it Spool of Blue Thread is Anne Tyler? Sounds right. That sounds right. I've always wanted to read that, but I'm fairly indifferent to that one. But I save a judgment till I read it. But what I'm super excited for is Who They Was by Gabriel Krauser. I'm only aware of one or two people that have read it, and I think they both were Bales, or one was a Bale and one was a one-star read or something. So I hope, I hope it goes better for you. I'm really interested, because it's meant to be written in London slang, like <laughs> throughout, which I think is interesting. And I think the fact that it's autobiographical intrigues me about the gang life of London. And I don't know if it's the same with yourself or if... I spoke to a few people from America and they're kind of like, is it that big of a thing? But there's like a lot of crime going on that kind of gets like broadcast to us, especially in regards to like life crimes and acid attacks. They mm. seem to be like on rise all the time in London. So I'm intrigued to see if it covers topics like that. But I do find, and I believe you're of the same opinion, that sometimes autobiographical verges into a bit wanky. If I can say that word. Yeah. The best. It doesn't work. I mean, uh, there needs to be some percolation and fictionalization yeah. or something more like the Indian I don't know if you... novelist. And they, they, they keep working on it for six years before. I, put it in front of me to read. Yeah. But I don't know, like, if you fictionalise London the gang crime, are you sensationalising it? Mm. I don't know how I feel, but like, I, but it's what I really want to enjoy. That's, like, up my street. Mm. I don't mind a dark, gritty novel. And then the last one is A Paragon by Colin McCann. How do you pronounce it? I've never heard it said out loud. A Paragon. Oh, that's so easy to say. Why is it written so weird? <laughs> do you mind if I tell you a story about my trials and tribulations of trying to obtain a paragon for my library? Please go ahead. I don't have the best library. Oh. Uh, I will publicly say this. The Triorki Library is horrific. It's horrific. As backstory, they told me the Salman Rushdie has never written a book and he's not an author. I've got that wrong. Okay. And they said, Cormac McCarthy's books are all out of print. So maybe you'd have to buy an antique copy. Interesting, wasn't it? I, I only wanted Blood Meridian. Just, just that, that small little book that he wrote. What's that didn't that? really do well. And it's not an American classic. But hey-ho. So I rung up asking for Carla McCann's A Paragon. Yeah. And obviously due to COVID times, everything has to be done over the phone. So like, we'll give you a ring back. Days went on, and they said, we're really sorry, we cannot find this book, not even on Amazon. So I think for the local libraries, they buy off Amazon, because it's normally a cheaper price, and then get them in that way, which is interesting. But I couldn't find it, and I went, I said, I know it's on Amazon, because it's, it's on the book of list. I'm pretty sure someone's making a killing from this. And it turned out they were looking for a pentagon, just a pentagon. And they went, we haven't got a book called pentagon i was like this is not going well so we have decided to just leave it there so if it's being ordered for me i don't know so i might have to buy it but there's a lot of controversy around Hollow McCann for two reasons oh two the two big reasons uh, do you know the two i know the one i'm not sure about the other one unless it's about kind of appropriation of voice or something but uh, i know the oh, hey, spot spot on spot okay. on yeah I, so that was just a guess, but the other one about the, the sexual allegations mm -hmm. so i yeah there's a lot of 
issue surrounding the book. And I don't know how Booker are going to navigate this situation. Mm-hmm. So I think with the appropriation of voice, I think he's got justification for because the two fathers who the story is based around are two real people and they've signed off the book saying, yes, this is our story. Yes, he's written it. Okay. So it's his voice. I feel as well with Palestine, I think you need a third party to talk about that situation because it's so volatile. And being Jewish, I've been in circumstances where I've been questioned on my views of Palestine. And coming from Wales, I'll say I've never been to Palestine, I've never been to Israel, but the conversation gets very biased very quickly. Yeah, no, so I'm not it's sure it's the most Yeah. So I I feel maybe is he like the is he the best person to tell the story because he's kind of separated from it. He's not he hasn't got any bias, but he's got these two fathers, one Jewish, one Muslim. I think they're now public speakers together telling their stories about their daughters. I think if both their daughters die, something like that. But they've signed her off. I think they were on the book tour with Colin McCann to kind of give publicity and to talk more about their experiences. Um, Spielberg's bought the rights to the book as well. So I feel as though it's going to be a good book, but if Booker shortlist it, I don't know. And I think you kind of get into that conversation of do we base the book on its own merit? And what would happen if it truly is the best book of the list? Are we neglected the book and the message over who Colin McCann is or what he's done? So we should say, for anybody that doesn't know, there's allegations of sexual assault against Colin McCann by a woman. I don't really know anything about her. I don't know. Is there any more? Uh, no, so rock to, it's Roxanne, Roxanne Gay's Gay friend. friend. Beyond that, I don't think we there's been, and it's only been on one or two tweets. It's not widely disseminated, and there have not been any charges laid, but there has been an allegation. Yeah. Um, there is okay. a thread on Britta's, Britta bailed on this book, and then there was a, uh, on her bail thing on Goodreads, there's a string of comments about the sexual assault allegations, and it's quite fascinating. I am just going mm. to reserve comment. Yeah, I think for me, until there's something concrete, I am going to read the book for the merit of the story, because even if Colin McCann has done the things that he's been accused of, I don't think that should uh, hinder these two fathers' real lives experiences. And it has done this if it gives more people a push to read Palestinian works on the crisis. I think that's kind of the message we should be pushing out because that part of the world is so volatile, it's so violent, and at times unfathomable of how Jews and Muslims are really fighting for the religion and a piece of land and how I don't think there's ever going to be a stop to it. I can't see it. I'd love there to be, mm. right? It's too ingrained. Is that the right word? I kind of want the book to, if it kind of pushes me to read more about that land, about the people, about the stories. I mean, there isn't anything out there other than two or three tweets, really, t- on which you yeah. form an opinion. So that's, I don't have an opinion. I'll be interested to see what they do. Because I didn't know much about it before I did my predictions. But had this not come out and kind of do a bit more, I probably think it would be shortlisted. But will the booker make that decision? I don't know. I think it would be too controversial for the prize to do that. I think they're in a bit of a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I always get confused. It's the Nobel that rewards villainy, isn't it? Oh, Peter Hadka. Yes, I remember him. I also liked how the, the Nobel said, we're going to leave it for this year because we don't want to give white European men the prize. And then just went, 
Peter Hadka. Let's, yeah, let's, let's choose let's him out of the, everyone. The white male fascist. <laughs> I on that do very it, do it cheery all. note, we better wrap up here, but I will be definitely curious to see your reaction video to the short list, now that you have tutored us all and your thoughts on the long list. And 15th of September, put it in your calendars. That's put right. Put calendars, 15th of September. Well, thank you very much, Kieran. Thank you very much as well. Uh,